headed to North American Caviar to go check out their place, talk to them a little bit, see what this Asian carp is all about. They are, are really excited about this opportunity to try to inform people about the fish and how they can they can help you know get rid of this problem. And we're gonna go sit down and talk with them and, and talk to the experts about this, and then we're gonna go home and cook. So North American Caviar has been in business for um, about 25 years. When we first started in the uh, Asian Carp uh, program, we were doing about 20,000 pounds a month. And before COVID, we were up to 250,000 pounds a month, which we process some here. We do a boneless strip and uh, everything, and then we the rest of them we haul to Kentucky to the uh, fish center up there. Yeah, they started showing up in Kentucky Lake 2006, seven, and uh, what they did on the Mississippi River, your crappie, your bass, your brim, they just pretty much are not existing down there now. They don't, from what we've seen as commercial fishermen, they don't, expect, they don't hurt the big river species as bad as your catfish, your buffalo, paddlefish, sturgeon. But, you know, as they became a problem more up here on uh, Kentucky Lake, you know, that's why that we've started fishing for them and trying to keep the numbers down because they can destroy, destroy your crappie, brim, mm -hmm. your largemouth bass populations. How did they get into Mississippi in the first place? Uh, there were dams over in Arkansas and Mississippi, uh, levees that mm -hmm. broke. They, uh, there was pond raisers that raise the Asian carp for, you know, uh, weed control and stuff like that in the, uh, you know, your catfish farms sure. and stuff like that. When the levees broke, the fish got into the Mississippi River and they they kind of multiply very, you know, extremely <laughs> fast. And when they really got into Kentucky Lake, had a few spawns and stuff, you know. It was over from there. Yeah. It can become a lot worse, like the Ohio va Valley, the Ohio River, Illinois River stuff. I mean, they're taking over. You know, it's it's it really hurts your game fish population and stuff. Yeah. I know. You know, eventually it's going to affect tourism whenever there's no crappie here. It and has. I'm sure that yeah. It has affected tourism tremendously. So Basically, the there wasn't left. You know, really, mm -hmm. it went to other areas. But basically, their Tennessee didn't have any infrastructure in place like Kentucky did to help alleviate the, uh, where does the fish go? It's great if we can get it out of the water, but what are we gonna do with sure. it? You can't just take it to a landfill. That's not really the answer. And most of the world eats Asian carp except the United States. Really? Yes. Uh -huh. That's what we're learning as we delve into this. Uh, but most of the world eats Asian carp except us, so we've got to find a way to adapt yeah. and change the mentality of Asian carp. And um, that's why we focused on getting the product, our fillets, not only in the wholesale market, but in the grocery stores mm -hmm. and in the local restaurants. And um, Blue's Landing has, has uh, graciously um, taken on, you know, the role to try to help in this area get Ocean Carp a better name and, and find recipes that he can yeah. use for it. The return on the fish is, is very small. It's not like a catfish or something. You're getting about a 10% return of that boneless meat. Out of you know, so if you've got a ten pound fish, you get one pound of boneless meat out of it. The fish is a really white meat. It's flaky. It's got a great taste. Uh, you know, it's got the name carp, and that's what a lot of people you know kind of think of the old common carp that's a dark meat or buffalo or mm -hmm. something like that. It's definitely higher in nutritional value than yes, a, really. You know, yes, any it's other got fish. it's it's a it's a really good fish. It's a We've had it grilled, baked, uh, in Cajun dishes, fried, you know, mm -hmm. there's a ton of ways to, you know, do it. I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna make three recipes, something like just a, a basic baked or grilled fish, you know, with, with the Asian carp and some 
easy vegetables to do. And like I said, we're gonna do a fish taco. I really like that idea. And maybe like a Creole, Cajun, blackened type of uh, fish with, you know, maybe like a crawfish sauce, some kind of uh, over rice great. or something. So mm -hmm. then we're gonna do just, like three recipes and just give, you know, three different ways to look at it. Well, shopping local is such a big part of Henry County. And um, this is a natural resource that we have. It wasn't naturally here, but um, we've got to learn to, Use it and Absolutely. put it on the dinner table. Gotcha. Alright guys, let's get started with the first recipe. The first one we're going to do is a beer battered fish taco. We're going to start off with about a cup of flour and we're just going to season that with salt and pepper. From there, just add your favorite beer to the flour mixture. Any beer should work and we used about 16 ounces here. You wanna add enough liquid so that it gets to a pancake batter type consistency. If you wanted to substitute either of the other two options of cooking this fish, it would certainly make for a healthier version of this recipe. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to the fish and get our oil up to temperature. You want it to be about 350 degrees for frying. When you're ready, go ahead and add your fish to the batter. Make sure everything is evenly coated. Drip the extra batter off. Make sure to lay it away from you so that the hot oil doesn't splash back towards you. It's important to not overcrowd your pan whenever you're frying this. So don't add too much at one time or else you'll run the risk of the oil getting up over the pan and that could cause some problems. Once you add the fish, go ahead and stir it so that the pieces don't stick to each other. And about halfway through, you're gonna to wanna to flip each piece so that each side gets evenly fried. Then you have to play the waiting game. Be patient. It took us probably five to seven minutes for each piece to be nice and golden brown. And once that's happened, go ahead and drain it on a paper towel. Once it's come out, you can hit it with some fresh lime juice if you'd like. And now we're just gonna start building our tacos. We've got a red cabbage slaw we're gonna start off with as the base. And we're gonna add a few pieces to each taco. We kind of kept it simple for these tacos. We wanted the fish to shine through so we can really see what it's all about. We added a little bit of cilantro, some fresh lime juice, and we topped it off with a sauce that we made. Something sort of like a cilantro crema sauce. We had some, we had some mayo, some sour cream, lime juice, cilantro, salt and pepper. It's a really simple sauce, but it really went well with this taco. We'll add the recipe in the description. Finish, we add a little cotija cheese and now it's time to eat. This was probably our favorite of the three recipes and if you know me I just love tacos so it, it really made sense. I didn't even care that there was some sauce still on my face. But listen to that crunch. This batter is awesome. It's so crunchy. It's so crisp. It's a really light and airy taco and this carp was amazing. Honestly, I had no idea what to expect going in. This was the first time I've even tried the fish and I was very surprised. It was essentially odorless. It was very white and flaky. And I know it's really nutritious for you as well. All right, time for recipe number two. We're gonna call this a blackened Asian carp over rice with a lemon garlic cream sauce. We're gonna do the sauce first so it has time to simmer. So start with two tablespoons of butter, grab a whisk, and if you feel comfortable, you can flip it. Um, it's not necessary though, but go ahead and melt that. While that's melting, we're going to go ahead and finely mince one to two cloves of garlic. Go ahead and add equal parts flour to your butter mixture so this can start the roux. And mix that up good. Once it's cooked off for a minute or so, add a little bit of cream. Stir that up and try to keep it in the pot. It's tough sometimes, I know. But just do the best you can. It's not a big deal, I guess. Just like any roux, just add a little bit more cream as you go until the sauce starts to thicken. Add a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of salt and pepper here. Now that sauce has cooked off for a little bit, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic, a little bit of milk to thin it out and go ahead and get some Parmesan cheese. Make sure it's not poisonous. 
and then add, I'm gonna say we added about half a cup here. Stir that up. You don't want it to be too thick. If it does get a little bit too thick on you, just add a little bit more milk. All right, let's get our fillets here. We've got the Asian carp fillets. We're gonna hit that with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and then our blackened seasoning. Now we'll have the recipe in the description, but we just had some smoked paprika, cayenne powder, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, salt, basil, oregano, and thyme for this. Go ahead and add that liberally and, and go ahead and mix everything up good so everything is evenly coated. Now, go ahead and grab a cast iron skillet. We added a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of vegetable oil so it raised the smoke point. And let that come up to temperature. It needs to be pretty hot. You want this thing to have a good sear on it. So wait until it's hot enough. Lay the pieces away from you so that the oil doesn't splash back towards you. Try not to overcrowd the pan and let that cook for three to four minutes on each side. Go ahead and flip that and once you do, add a little bit of butter. You don't have to add it so aggressively. But we also meant to grab some thyme earlier from the garden. This is a good point to realize you didn't get it. So we'll run out behind you and go grab some thyme. Hustle back and then throw that in the pan. And we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of butter basting here just to add some extra flavor. So take a spoon, tilt that pan and, and baste that fish with the butter. Now it's finished off, let's add it to a paper towel on tray. And let's go ahead and plate this up. We've got some white rice already cooked. We're gonna just gonna lay that on there nice and neat. Then we're gonna add the sauce. I'm a firm believer that you eat with your eyes first, so if you can, try to make it pretty. We're gonna garnish it with a little bit of our blackened seasoning, some pepper, and some parsley. And there you have it. Blackened Asian carp over rice with a lemon garlic cream sauce. All right, for this third dish, we're gonna do a very simple baked Asian carp with some great summertime vegetables. This is a simple, easy dish to do that anyone can cook. We're gonna start off by getting our Asian carp seasoned up. We're gonna hit it with some extra virgin olive oil, then add some salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. Get that nice and seasoned up and then mix it in so that everything's evenly coated. And we're gonna set that off to the side. Now let's go ahead and prepare our vegetables. Use any vegetables you'd like. We have a lot of stuff coming into the garden right now and we're gonna try to use as much of that as possible. We're making enough just for two people to eat on so you can definitely scale this recipe up to as many people as you're feeding. But we're gonna start off with a green bell pepper. We're just gonna dice that up and we're gonna cut up a red onion. Now we have some fresh zucchini we just picked. We're gonna slice that up really thinly. Now we're gonna take some squash and do the exact same thing. We're gonna take two cloves of garlic here, one of them for the vegetables and one of them for the fish. Go ahead and finely mince that. This one's gonna be saved for the vegetables and do the same thing again and add this one straight to the fish. Now we're gonna slice this lemon. We're gonna slice this into circles just like we did the squash or zucchini but this is gonna serve as a bed for the fish to sit on. Again, use any vegetables you like. We have some jalapenos that are fresh in the garden, so we're gonna chop that up real fine, and we're gonna add that to the fish as well. It's gonna give it a little bit of spice, and again, this is totally optional. If you don't like jalapenos or any kind of heat, you can totally skip this step or add anything else to this as you like. Now, we have some fresh dill. This is also gonna serve as a bed for the fish to sit on on top of the lemon. It's gonna really give us a nice light taste. It's great for the summertime and it's really easy to do. Now we're gonna take all our vegetables and just throw them onto the sheet tray. Again, when I say throw it on there, I really mean just throw it on there because I guess that's the best way to do it. Now we're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some salt and some pepper. Go ahead and take that and mix it up all really well so that everything has the seasoning on it. It's totally optional, but if you're OCD like me, you can make it really pretty and line the vegetables up accordingly. 
We're just gonna separate the zucchini, the squash, the onion, and the peppers. Then we're gonna place the lemons in the middle. It's gonna act as a bed for the fish to sit on. It's gonna add some flavor. It's gonna steam up while it's cooking. The lemon and the dill go really well together. And luckily the fish will be done at the same time that the vegetables are. They should all be fork tender after about 10 to 12 minutes. Now we've already got our oven preheated to 400 degrees. We're just gonna stick that right in the oven and set a timer for 12 minutes. After 12 minutes, the fish should be done. It should be really flaky. If you take your finger, it should just pull apart pretty easily. But if you know me, you know that we're gonna do a little bit more to it. We're gonna turn the broiler on at this point and we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. You know, I know this doesn't make it any healthier, but it makes it taste better, so I'll leave that up to you. Add the cheese to it, then we're gonna toss that under the broiler for just a minute or two. Let that cheese be nice and bubbly and then pull it out, and there you go. It doesn't get much easier than that. This is a delicious meal that serves the whole family. Again, you can scale this up to feed as many people as you like. It's really nice, it's light, it's a great summertime dish, and it's quite delicious. So there you have it. Three different ways to prepare Asian carp. All three were completely different, and all three were absolutely delicious. And there's a million different ways to cook this fish. It's eaten all around the world except for the United States. So I'm really hoping we can bring a little bit of awareness to that. And hopefully it can help alleviate some of the problems we have with this invasive species. As always, if you have any recommendations for what we should cook next, leave them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us on social media. Thank you for watching, and I really hope you consider liking this video. And if you'd like to see more food videos, go ahead and subscribe to us. It really helps us out.